Welcome back, everyone. We are working on object-oriented programming with a dog object. We're using sololearn.com. We're talking about classes and objects. In the last tutorial, we created a very plain constructor. And in this case, the constructor looks as follows. Um, the constructor is basically has the same name as the object. And in this case, this object, this dog object, doesn't do a lot. In fact, all we really did was create a new dog and never did anything with it. So in the case of uh, objects, is objects can have behavior. We call these methods. And a method is a collection of statements that are grouped together to perform an operation. It's something the object can do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our dog object and we're going to give it a method. And of course, think about some of the behaviors that dogs do. In this case, we're going to create the behavior of speak. So we're going to have this dog speak. So we're going to create a method um, and we're going to make it public. So I'm going to go ahead and make it public. And that's so that in our virtual dog world, we can have our Fido object speak. So we make it public. And now what we have to do is create a uh, return value. And the return value is basically when you write a method, let's say it's speak, for example, we got to ask ourselves, is speak going to actually send any information out or not? In the first case, we're going to not have it send anything out, but we still have to tell Java that. So what we're going to do is put this keyword called void. And void just means nothing is going to come out. We're not going to return any value. In a moment, we will return a value, and I'll show you the difference on there. So in this case, public void speak, what do you think a dog's going to do? Well, it's going to, I'm going to do a little system.out.println statement. And we're just going to say bark, like so. Okay. So in this case, this is the speak method. We know it's a method because look at this. We have all this code here. Um, and it's basically kind of like a function that's going to have our dog be able to do something. In this case, speak. So in order to call the function, we do uh, what we call it, invoke a method. And that's a, just a fancy word for calling the method or having Fido, in this case, speak. Now, the first thing you'll note is I take the object title. This is a variable that re represents our new dog, Fido. And in this case, Fido, we want it to do something. So we start by writing the name of the variable. We put a dot and uh, we're going to look for a method. Now you'll notice in Java, there's a lot of these methods built right in, and that's just the way Java works. But this one right here, speak void, this is the, uh, is the method that we just created. And we have it available now because I defined it in the class. So in the class it's defined, and in here, we're gonna just call that method, fido.speak. Let's test this out. Bark, there we go. All right, so that's a very simple method. In this case, what the method does is it outputs a string um, using system.out.println.bark. In some cases, you actually don't want to have uh, the method just do an output within the method. Many times, a lot of methods, we want to return values. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the speak method and we're going to just change it up a little bit. In this case, we're going to send out a string, and that string is going to be bark, but we're going to do it a little bit different. So this is how we're going to do it. The first thing we want to do is let uh, Java know that we're sending out a string. And so when you have a method, you can either send nothing out, make it void, or you can send just one data type out. In this case, we're going to send out a string. Okay, so in this case, as soon as I indicate I'm going to send out a string, we have a problem here. And the problem is because I've indicated it's going to return a string, I have to make sure I have a return statement. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write return and then I'm going to just return that string of bar like so. And I need to have a semicolon and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter because I think it's good to have your curly bracket on its own line. It's a very common syntax for doing Java. Now we have in this case speak is returning a value. It's a literal value of bark. So in order to capture this, we have to do fido.speak just a little bit differently. We need to capture it with the variable. I'm going to write string message equals fido.speak. Now, when fido.speak is called, it's going to send out a message. It's going to return that message of bark. Well, this variable is going to capture it. 
So now what we have to do is go ahead and do an output on here, system.out.println, and we're going to write on here, Fido says, now I'm going to just put a little plus sign, concatenator, and we're going to write message. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run this now, and as you can see, it now says, Fido says, bark. Okay, so... Uh, two, two things we did is I showed you how you can have a method that returns a value and a method that doesn't return a value. Um, and at this point, it's a very simple method. And what we're going to do is in the next tutorial is we're going to take this dog and we're going to give it some values. And we're going to give uh, some things called a getter setter method. So we're going to look at some other types of methods that use our variables which we haven't created yet. So we'll do that in the next tutorial. Stay tuned.